Hey guys, welcome back. We're still on section 3.2. It's really 3.3 in our textbook, um, but in the YouTube videos, it's going to be 3.2. We're gonna do one more example on increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. I'm gonna teach you about points of inflection. All right, so here's our function, x plus two squared times x minus one. Now this is actually very important because um, to find the critical values for something that is being raised to a power. Um, let me teach you how to do that. So first, we understand that it's a product rule, right, everyone? So we are going to keep the first, right? And then we're going to take the derivative of the second, which is this person right here. That's just one. Plus, now I'm going to keep the second which is x minus 1, times the derivative of the first. Now, if you guys remember, this is what we call a chain rule. Why is it a chain rule? Because it's a power, it's an expression with a power other than 1, right? It's raised to the 2. So I'm going to go and write 2, recopy the inside, drop it by 1. So now the exponent is 1 times the derivative of the inside. All right. So once I do this here, I notice something about x plus 2 squared times 1 plus x minus 1 times 2 times x plus 2 to the first. Anytime you have a problem like this, you must factor out that x plus 2, okay? So now, we can only take 1 out because this one has 2, but this one only has 1, so we're factoring it. So what I do before I factor it is I take this 2 right here and I times that by 2x minus 2, okay? So I have 2x minus 2 times the x plus 2. In both of these cases, I have x plus 2. So I factored that part out. That's right there. And then I'm left with one of these because there's two of them. So I'm left with one if I factor that out. And I'm left with none of them. So now what that does for me is like it's saying, wow, that's to the first power. That's to the first power. And we can just get rid of the parentheses when it's to the first power. So x and 2x makes 3x positive 2 and negative 2 makes 0. Great. Now we have the x plus 2 on the outside. So you guys can pause the video, try it yourself, and see if we come up with the same answer. All right. We took the first derivative, and now we're going to set it equal to 0 to find their critical numbers. Well, we can see easily that negative 2 makes this part 0, and um, 0 makes this part 0. So my two critical numbers are these two guys. Once we do that and we find those critical numbers, we make a number line, and that's f prime of x. We're going to put those, those two critical numbers here. Now we're going to test. So I'm going to say, what is f prime of negative 3? What is f prime of negative 1? And what is f prime of positive 1? Well, for negative 3, when I plug it back in here, I get a negative 1 times a negative 3, which shows a positive. So this is positive. And now for negative 1, I'm going to get a positive 1 times a negative 3. So that's negative. And then for f prime of 1, I get a positive and a positive. And so that's a positive. So the function increases. So increases, sorry about the room as always, negative infinity to negative 2 and from 0 to infinity. And then it decreases from negative 2 to 0. What do we call negative 2 and 0 now? Well, let me get rid of this part here. Well, if we go up, then down, that's called a relative max. So there's a max at x equals negative 2, and then there's a min at x equals 0. Great. So that's the first derivative, and it tells us increasing, decreasing, relative max, relative min. Remember the second derivative? So I rewrote this here on this page for you. This is the original problem. This is the derivative, right? That's this guy right here that we just finished. And now I... What I did here was, I'm not going to use a product rule here. That would be so silly because x plus 2 is to the first power. And I just finished telling you, if it's to the first power, you could just basically get rid of the parentheses, but don't forget to distribute. So that's 3x squared plus 6x. The derivative of 
f prime of x is f double prime of x, and that's 6x plus 6. Now, set that equal to 0, and you get x equals negative 1. We're just going to follow the same exact steps, but for the double derivative. Now, I'm going to put a double derivative there on my number line, okay? And then f double prime of negative 2, well, that's a negative. f double prime of 0, that's a positive. So what does that mean? That means it's concave down because it's negative. It's concave down from negative infinity to negative 1, and then it's happy face because it's a positive, concave up from negative 1 to infinity. Now, negative 1, this is the new thing, negative 1 is not a max or min. Actually, when we switch in the second derivative, when we switch concavity from down to up or up to down, we have something called a point of inflection. And that just tells you where your shape of the graph switches. So how do we find negative 1, uh, comma, what? Anytime you want to find any points that are on the graph, you need to plug it into the actual graph. So negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1 squared is 1, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So there's a point of inflection at negative 1, negative 2. You guys just try to graph all of these. And the way that you're supposed to graph is by putting the points first. So negative 1, negative 2 is a point on the graph. So is this max x equals to negative 2. You're going to have to fill this in. So negative 2 will actually just give us a y of 0. Okay, because negative 2 minus negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And then 4 times negative 1. So that's negative 4. So you plot those two points. You plot the point of inflection. You should also try to find intercepts. Okay, so that's negative 2. And that's positive 1. One. Those are both x-intercepts. You should also see if there's a y-intercept, okay? And, um, and that's actually, yes, obviously, because you make x equal to 0. And then you do increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. You draw the picture, and then you can use your calculator to confirm the picture. But right now, I wanted to talk to you about point of inflection, and that's the place where we switch from down to up, up to down. Now, if it doesn't switch, that means there's no point of inflection. Okay, so I hope this was helpful.